So we're going to get into more detail about posts a little later, but we were just doing a little practice with creating a post. I published the post. If I were to make more changes to it, the button up here now then says update. I've published it one time. I uh, then will make an update. And notice this, this publish box tells me this was published on May 10th, 1900 hours. And I've made three revisions so far. So the cool thing about posts, or just about anything in WordPress, is that it has a history. Posts, pages, etc. have history. You can re refer or uh, reload previous versions of content. and even restore old versions. So WordPress saves all the updates you were making to your page. Every time you do publish uh, or update, it saves different versions. Uh, you're able to return back to a version from a week ago. Undo works right now. I undo 10 times to go back and redo and take back the 10 things I did today. But if I were then to publish it and come back a week later and someone tells me, oh, you've got, a, you've got an error in that post, well, I have the ability with revisions right here to go browse the previous versions. And up here it says, okay, there was this version, and I slide this back to a previous version, and I slide it back to a previous version. So I, I didn't really make many changes on that version, but on this version, there was that, which then I added this. And then when I go back a little further, I see more changes. I'm sorry, Victor, I blinked. When you click right here, Revisions Browse, you won't see Browse unless you've already published at least one time and made a change. There's nothing to browse to if it's still the same. So browsing it, um, if I had different versions of it, so this one says it was from 2 minutes ago, from 15 minutes ago, and I have the option restore this version. It would bring back an older version. Yes? So that's version control per page, but um, if you did something that did something site-wide, is there an overall version control for the entire thing? Not quite, and it would depend what you're trying to change site-wide. This is more for individual pages and posts and, and like products and those sorts of things. For the whole site, there doesn't seem to be that much undo. Now, we will be able to handle that with something we'll talk about a little bit later with making a backup of our site. We'll get to that a little later. Here from this uh, publish box area, uh, we've also got okay visibility public. If we click Edit, uh, we've got Make it Public, Password Protect it, Make it Private. So this is a very basic way to make pages that a person requires a password to access. Now this is not as great as you think, because this is only adding a password to this one page, not the whole site. When we cover plugins, there are then plugins, these little mini apps that will let you add features to the whole site. So this is just for like one page, password, and it's just super basic. I'm going to add a password to this. And if anyone tries to visit the page and they want to read it and they have the password, they can view it. There isn't very much about like create different accounts and send people different passwords. And it's very basic. Private is that uh, people don't need a password, but the page will not be visible. If I were to go over to. Um, you know, visit site right now, that page is visible because it's public. If I were to put it under private, it wouldn't be visible. But people could still find the page if they had uh, if they had access to it. Now I'm logged in, so it says private. But they wouldn't be able to see it without the link. So we've got public, password, private. Um, we could 
if we wanted to sort of unpublish the page that's over here under status. Uh, our status is, is edit. We can go into um, draft. That unpublishes it. We want it gone completely from the from the front end. People, I don't want people to see it at all. Maybe someone saved the address, the link to the page, and even if I put it on private, they could still get to it. They have the private link. The only way to really make it that no one can um, can get to an item is to have it set to um, draft. And then you, you publish that, you make the change. Yeah? If, if you have a page that's about to go live and want to, to get buy in, basically, you can approve it. You could just set it up on a password and give it a private password, right? And they would be able to go to the site and see it in the site framework, but it still would be locked set down. Up that yeah, that's one way to do it have it private or have the password. It's not for public everyone and then you can get it like beta test beta test it a bit sure yeah it's pretty flexible now let's say I want to um, publish this in the future we have the ability there to set a date later I want this to be published next June the 10th at 1900 hours so um, I could set a future publication date that way uh, I don't have to remember to sit down at the computer write the article and remember to publish it I could spend a day where I write you know three or five articles and then I set each one on a schedule and then they'll appear when you when you set it is it possible to set recurring schedules not with the built-in WordPress. If you want a recurring schedule, it's a plug-in, and then that'll give you that extra feature. So WordPress has a lot of features, but then there's many that are not active until you activate them, because not everyone needs every feature, and it would be even more confusing. But yes, there's uh, just about everything you want to do, or anything you want to do in WordPress. If it's not there by default, there's going to be an extra plug-in that will activate it. This thing about format and categories, we'll get, we'll come back to that. Um, it's a little more complex than I want to get to just yet. So this that I created here, I'll just put it very simply. Yes. Yes. The latest one will always be at the top, exactly. So it's going to go in order how you tell it. Now that reminds me, you could change the order here also by date. Uh, we published two today on the 10th. I could change this that actually I published this one today, uh, you know, at um, you know um, at two at one o'clock. So I could back date these things to kind of change the order of when they appear. Those were posts. Let's um, let's um, go over to pages. Posts are for news items. What? new updates log posts you know all of those things uh, synonyms posts are for these things which are pages or screens that change on a regular basis in contrast which we'll do right now pages are for about contact what else might be a screen that doesn't change too often on a website location location and such what's that 
So screens that don't change that often uh, are pages. So under pages here, under this pages screen, let's create a contact page. Let's say Victor's Bakery, well, we need a contact page so that people know how to get in touch with us. So I see the add new pages. Make sure now you're under pages, it looks the same if you're under posts, it says add new. If you don't notice, it'll say posts. Make sure you're under pages. We will add a new page. And here, I can call it, did I say about or contact? I forgot already. Whatever, about us. <laughs> We create an about us page, contact us page, whatever. We'll, we'll create a page. And so I called it about us, about me, about the company, or just about. The permalink, once I click outside of that, it'll say vickersbakery.com or you know localhost because we're on WAMP server, about-us. So this permalink takes what you wrote in the title, it puts it lowercase, and all spaces automatically become dashes. If you want it to be underscores, or if you want it to say something else, that's when you can edit it. But this default is often very good. Lowercase dashes. If I just want the page to say about, I can do that. There's no big difference regarding SEO. Visually, for the person, it could say about us. For the person reading the about us page, it'll say about us. And in the web address, the, the bar up there, the URL, it'll say about. And there's no big difference. SEO wise, which is better? They both have the same meaning. So, here, just to write whatever, I'm going to say founded in 1999. We are San Diego's only whatever. I'm not going to write anything real. I'm just going to write something for an about page. And then click publish. There's still other boxes to look at. We'll get to that later. But I'm just going to create an about page and make something up. Publish it. Let's create a contact page. So we've got edit page, and we've got add new. Contact. Create a brand new page, call it contact. Visit us at 123 Fake Street, San Diego, California, 90919. I want a cool map here. I want driving directions. Yes, that can be added if we've got a plugin. The default is very basic. But you've seen websites, I'm sure, that have a very cool map that you can zoom in, and it's got the, the bus schedule on it and all of that great stuff. Well, that's via a plugin, and we'll talk about plugins later. We'll keep it very simple, just a very quick contact and just a phone number. Just going to make this up. Hopefully it's not your phone number, but there it is. Well, don't they usually do the 555 thing? Well, I want in this contact screen, I want a contact form. I want for someone to fill in boxes to send me an email or ask me a question. Again, that's going to be a plug-in that we'll talk about a little later, because if we just put in, you know, Victor at victorsbakery.com, you know, there's my email, send me an email, sure, but it's going to be more secure to have a, a contact form and we'll talk about forms a little later when we get to plugins. So we've got a quick contact page. I'm going to publish it. We're going to create two more pages. We'll click Add New. Create a brand new page called Blog. And we'll just write the latest blog posts go here. <clears throat> I 
blog page, publish it. Here's a new page, home. On home, home page, home screen, welcome screen. These things will be called anything you want. I'll just call it home. Welcome to Victor's Bakery. Here you'll find whatever. And then I'll publish that. So if I go back to all pages, again, you don't have to be too detailed, but under uh, what, I, what, we, what we've done is we've got an about page, a blog page, contact page, home page, and then the built-in sample page. You don't see it until you roll over them, but once you roll over one of these pages, you get the menu. How do you think you get rid of a page you no longer want? Trash. Trash. So let's just delete that sample page. It's a sample. It's a placeholder. We don't need it. Go back to all pages. And then I'm going to delete the sample page. Trash. I'm keeping about, blog, contact, and home. Actually, wait a minute. That, that uh, sample page was incredibly valuable. I need to bring it back. Trash. I can go view everything that I've trashed. Nothing actually gets deleted until you empty the trash. So I've got four. In total, I've got four pages. Four of them have been published. If I go back and say, I don't want the contact page to be public yet, I could go back to Edit Contact and set it to Draft. And it'll say, you've got four in total, three published, one draft. And I've trashed one so far. So I see one trashed. And from trash here, I can say delete permanently or restore. So that's cool. It doesn't actually delete a page or a product until you fully empty the trash. And um, I don't believe there is any auto empty. It, it will always be there in your trash can unless you, unless you manually then also then go to permanently delete. That's good and bad. It's good in that whatever I delete, I can still bring it back just in case I made a mistake. But it's bad because it still is there and takes up space on your server. And all of that detritus adds up, and it could slow down your site. So there's no right or wrong answer if you don't empty your trash can. But just be aware that it does take up resources on your site. And it's going to depend how much it takes up on you. How many things have you thrown away? How many different copies of things do you have? Um, do you ever clean it out? Do you leave it? There, do you do you know some spring cleaning once in a while, or do you just add it, let it add up? Okay, so now that we've got a home page and a blog page, now we can go over to the settings and set a static home page. Because the default is that if I go to the front end right now, on the front end I see posts by default. There's the Hello World. There's my WordPress day two. I don't see anywhere on the screens here. Where's the About page? Where's the Contact page? I don't, I don't see that anywhere. And where's the message that says Welcome to Victor's Bakery? I don't see that welcome message. We need to set that after we've created these things. Let's go to Settings, Reading. Default is Blog Style. You must create pages as placeholders before you can set your site to static home page. That's what we just did. We've got a contact page, blog page, home page, etc. Now we can change that setting under um, settings reading. Well, in the in the dashboard settings reading your home page displays a static page the home page content will be visible from the home page the posts will be put into their own screen of blog which we could have called news 
updates, writings. We could call these pages anything we want. But where are we putting, what are we using as our homepage placeholder? And where are we putting our blog posts if we write blogs? Because they're no longer on the home page. We're moving them elsewhere. Technically, you don't need to put your posts anywhere. You don't have to create a blog page. It's just that your blog post will not appear anywhere in the site. Well, that's OK. I'm not going to write articles. That's fine. You don't have to set posts to anything. But for SEO, and we'll talk about it later, and I talk about it in my SEO class, it is valuable to write blogs. It is valuable to write articles on your website. The short answer is because that creates content content that the search engines can find, content that people are searching for. I want to find a recipe, best pecan pie recipe. Guess what? I've got an article on my Victor's Bakery website, the best pecan pie recipe. And I could possibly get found then, because I've got content that people are searching for. So the default is blog style, recommendation write blogs, articles, aka articles, aka content, so that it helps your SEO. After you make those two settings there, go ahead and click Save at the bottom of the screen, and then Visit Site. What's that? No, so that it helps your SEO. Write blogs so that it helps your SEO. So once I save these reading settings, visit site. The first thing that I see now, here's my home screen. Welcome to Victor's Bakery. I don't see those blog posts. I didn't want the blog posts on the home screen. I wanted a picture or text or you know home page content. I want the news articles and such on their own screen of blog. But as I as I look at the site uh, again, I don't see a menu. And where do I click to go to the blogs? And what about that about page? And what about that contact page? Well, here's the. Here's the confusing thing on, on WordPress. Usually, no pages appear on the site unless they're in a menu. Usually, the default theme has no menu. To set a menu, Your, you go to your dashboard, you go to appearance, you go to menus. Let's do that. I have this content about contact and, and the blogs, but they're not visible anywhere on the site because there's no menu. Uh, we're going to set a menu. And the reason it doesn't automatically do it is because sites can be pretty complex and it might not know exactly what kind of menu to set up. It doesn't know that you want an item and then a sub-item. It doesn't know that you want to click and then a sub-click on something. Um, it's not smart enough to know what kind of menu you want, so it puts no menu. Some themes try to put a basic menu, and we saw that when last on Tuesday when I was jumping around between themes. There was a particular theme that had a menu, and I saw sample page in the menu. Well, not every theme has it. I would not assume every theme has it. And that's OK, because I want to create my own menu. So let's do so. Let's go back to the dashboard if you're not there. Appearance, menus. And the first time we look at this menu screen, it's pretty weird, kind of complex. But after you see how it works, over here, the menu items will be here. The possible things to put into the menu are here. Nothing is selectable here because I haven't created a menu yet. Edit your menu or create one. You can have multiple menus with different items in them for different screens and such. 
let's name our menu here main menu and click create I want to put items in a main menu this can be called anything you want it could just be called menu it could be called menu number one one way uh, that this could also be useful is let's say I'm doing different sales throughout the year summer menu winter menu etc create And now I'm able to add items. But before we add items, here's a here's the thing that always confuses people. I created an amazing menu. I still don't see it. That's because you also didn't say where should it be displayed. Depending on your theme, you're going to have different options here. We're probably all using the same 2017 theme. So we've got two locations. The top menu or the social links menu. Let's select top menu and click save. Let me make some notes here. Remember to set your menu location or else the menu you made won't show up. And that always happens when I teach this, even when I explain it and point to it and zoom into it. People always forget this. I made my menu, I can't see it on screen. Then we go back to their settings, they never said where to display it. I want my menu to have the home button, the contact <coughs> button, the blog button. So from here, from my pages, most recent or view all, I want to select to show the home, the blog, the contact, the about us. I want to turn all of them on and click add. So click all of those, click add. Now this doesn't do a very good job representing what it's actually going to look like once we visit site. Because depending on the theme, your menu might be vertical or horizontal. I don't know exactly how it'll look just yet until I save it and visit site. But the order that we see here, this is the order that it's going to appear. If the menu is horizontal, like in WordPress here, I have a top horizontal menu, right? I've got the WordPress icon, Victor's Bakery icon, the comments icon, the new icon. This is a horizontal menu, left to right. This is represented the same way, left to right. This is the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one. So if you've got a horizontal menu in this particular theme, it'll be home, then blog, then contact, then about. Yes? If you wanted to call that Victor's Blogs, how would you edit that? If instead of saying blog, I want Victor's Blog, I can click to edit an item and change what it's going to say right there. Very, very straightforward, yep. If I've got a vertical menu, so this is vertical here, dashboard, post, menu, etc., it's this, it's in this order. I'm gonna click save, visit site, and go look for your menu in your in your design. So it says main menu has been updated. I'm going to visit site. And now in this particular design, there's a menu right there, horizontally. I'm on the home screen. It's a little bit grayed out to show I'm on the home screen. I go to contact. There's what I wrote under contact. Contact is grayed out. About us. Blog. There's the blog screen with the two blogs I previously wrote. As I write more blogs, they will all be there. And with this theme, as I scroll down, in my case, when I scroll down, you see the menu is always visible. I'm scrolling, and that top menu is always there. Uh, that's a factor uh, or a function of the, of the theme. Maybe you don't see that because you, your monitor is a different size than mine. But um, all very easily, uh, we, we can set those things. Actually, what I want is I want home, then contact then about, then blog. I want to change the order of these. So if you go back to menus, menus, you notice there's a shortcut here. 
instead of going to dashboard and then appearance and then menus when you're in the front end you can do a shortcut hover over and then go to menus because I want to change the order of these or I want to change the text I want it to say news or updates or whatever first of all to change the text on any of the items like I mentioned just a moment ago you open the menu item you change the label instead of log I wanted to say updates when I save that now my menu even though the original page said blog now in the front end after saving I have updates the address is still slash blog but what shows up in the menu is updates, which is also different than the title of the page. So if you wanted to that, for that to also say update, you have to go back and edit the blog page to change that. Yes? Is there a way to customize the appearance of the text or the covering or anything? That's based on the theme. This particular theme is very basic. It doesn't have very, and it's not very interesting what it looks like when you hover. If the theme allows it under customize, I might have the option to change some of that. But if the themes don't show the menus, how can you know? Um, well, eventually when you activate a menu, then you will see what it looks like or what it, how it behaves. But also, when you're thinking of downloading a, men, uh, a theme, there's also preview. And preview will, will give you a preview of what uh, the menu might look like before you actually commit to it. Now also remember, uh, I, they're not giving me a lot of customization. But I can always go to the editor, the appearance editor. And if I know the code, then I can change it to how I want. But that is code related. Question? Uh, yes, I would. I would uh, check out their documentation exactly. So, um, because people want to be able to customize all of this, most likely somewhere in the details and such, or in their documentation, it'll tell you what can and can't be changed and how complex and such. Like this particular one, their menu is, you know, very interesting. You, you click their menu item and it looks like that. It's going to be big horizontal items and rollovers and a background color. Well, I want that to be yellow instead of red. Uh, I have to read the documentation to see if they allow that to be edited. And even if they don't allow it to be edited, I can change anything I want if I know the code in the editor. <coughs> yes? Can you say that you cannot have submenus without another plugin? No, I, I didn't say that. We're going to do submenus right now. Okay, so here I've got uh, these menu items, and they're in this order. I wanted updates as the last item. Well, that's easy. I just click and drag from here to here. So now I can change these how I want. Now be careful here, because as you're moving these things around, you might actually do this, submenu. Mm -hmm. So when you drag it and it becomes indented, now that's a submenu item. If I publish this and I hover over home, it will then drop down to show contact. So creating submenus is uh, completely easy here, but also accidental. If you don't see that, you tabbed it in. And when I go see the front end, automatically I get home a little triangle. There's about us, there's updates, that's the order I wanted, and then when I hover, it automatically pops up contact. Oh, nice. So it's very, very direct. Now you can actually have submenu items of submenu items if you want, or don't pay attention if you do that. <laughs> so now I've got a submenu item of a submenu item of home. And you know that that's not wrong if that's what I want. If I want imagine later when we do home products subcategory cookies, subcategory cakes. And then in cookies, we've got chocolate chip cookies, raisin cookies, whatever. So we can have submenu items of submenu items. Eventually, when we get here, 
products. Right now we can add pages, individual posts, custom links, categories to the menu. And later when we add the plugin for products, we will have products and product categories and such. So just to see how this mess would look like, there it is under home. I hover over there, I get contact. Hover over here, I get about us and updates. I want them on the same indentation level. And sometimes it's a little annoying to cajole it into the right place. See, it doesn't want to do it. There it is. And then over here. Yes, you create them as regular old pages, and then you select them from here, add them, and then arrange them how you want, and you've got submenus. Let's say I'm selling my cookies and such here, but I'm also selling uh, t-shirts about my business, but I'm selling them over on my Etsy account, or eBay, or something. I want to add a link in my menu to some other website. Not just within my website, I want to add a link somewhere else. What do you think we do over here? Custom link. Enter the URL and what's the text that appears on the menu? So just to put whatever, etsy.com slash Victor's Bakery. That's not a real link, but it will, it will work. And I can put whatever I want there. This is the text that will appear on the menu. This is the link of where it's going to. Just make it up. Add to menu. Arrange it if you want. Make it a sub item if you want. So you can have links to an external website. Save that. When I visit site, I have home, contact, about, updates, Etsy shop. When I click that, it tries to go to Etsy, but that doesn't exist. So you get this, you get this sad girl with uh, three sleeves on her sweater with a how to knit. Oh, that's funny. So um, now the, the problem here you might see is once I clicked on the Etsy button, it took me to Etsy. And if I were to close this screen, it would close my whole site. I have to press back to go back to my site. And what if I, what if I clicked on Etsy and I browsed over here and I went over here and over here? I have to press back several times, back and back and back. Uh, don't you usually see on a website that if you click to another site, it opens in its own window or tab? This is one of these features that is not on by default, that is uh, very important that it's just not on, that we can activate very easily. If we go back to the menus, I want the Etsy link to open in its own window. And you see options when you open these elements. You see the option of what's the address, what's, what's the label. There's another option that is not turned on unless you turn it on. And remember, every screen has a way to customize things a little bit. How was that again? Screen options, right there. And it's not obvious, but it's this, link target. This is off. If you set your screen options in this menu screen, if you turn on link target, when I then open any of these items, now I've got open link in a new tab. <laughs> I don't have to do it.
the screen off. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I click save name, oh, I'll turn it on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's not part of the save name. Sorry, say that again. So you turn all the target. Do I not have to click save menu? Well, screen options. Screen you turn screen options on, then you turn on link target, and then if you turned on, if you turned on, then open in a new tab, then you have to click save. It's per individual one. I would not want open in a new link for my contact or my home and all of that. I want to stay in my site in one window. I would only turn these on for external links. It's going to confuse people about why do I have seven tabs open if I've been browsing this site. The only time you want to open in a, in a new tab is when you go to some external site. And then after that, we'll save. So this is one of the ones I'm like really surprised. Why don't they just have this on by default? This is so useful to us, but it's not on unless someone gave you the, the arcane knowledge to go here to screen options and turn that on. And it still doesn't make sense. Link target, that doesn't sound like open in a new window. Even though they tell you down here, when you turn that on, now you have the option, open link in a new tab or window. Mm -hmm. Keep you coming back. <laughs> You've got these other things that you could do. If you've got advanced CSS skills, you can style your, your, your menu items if you know CSS. Um, depending on the theme, we've also got this description. If you turn on description, um, then you get a new little field on these where you can write a description. Depending on the theme, it may show what you wrote there. Which is different than when you, whenever you visit many, uh, many websites, uh, right, you've got like a, you hover over a something, let's see if I can see an example you often have when you when you hover over something you get a little pop-up I can't find it but here's here's the difference here title attribute under title attribute here's another advanced item turned off um, title attribute gives you another little box your title attribute and this is this could be more text that appears once you person hovers over the link so um, yes tooltip yeah, so you can write whatever you want here and say um, visit our cool merch. Does that um, show up for um, assistive devices to uh, you know read it out? Yes, it's also it's the title attribute. So assistive devices would be looking for the attributes alt and title, and depending how they've got their screen reader and such. It would read it aloud or in a different tone and such. So all of these were hidden. Description, which is dependent on the theme, open in its own window. And if you want a little bit of extra tool tip, you can turn that one on. And all of those were hidden right here inside of the screen options in the top right corner. Once you save that, uh, I visit site, nothing, the description doesn't show up, but when I hover over, visit our cool merch. These over here don't have a tooltip pop-up, because I never set uh, the title attribute. Only this one that I set it. So adding those descriptions, but it doesn't show that actually. Yeah. Yep. That's another case there where uh, you have a little bit of SEO juice, and it's <laughs> off by it's off by default. So a lot of people don't don't know it, don't use it. Well, now that you know it, I would use it. And on all of these, write a little bit of extra description, even if your theme doesn't display it, because the search engine will see that. The search engine looks at your site like this as code. And so all of the code that's here, I, I would never see that as a person, but the search engine does. And the search engine finds a spot right there that says menu, item, tooltip, whatever, and then it reads that and saves it in its database. So what I'll say here, advice, use link target 
if you uh, are linking to an external site. You should write real sentences, not just full of keywords. You would write a period, because that was one sentence, and then write another sentence. So it's not just a collection of keywords, it's real sentences. Use description, write complete sentences. Yes. I was curious about that uh, save as pending that you have on um, pending approval. Mm -hmm. um, could you set that up for um, basically assign one of your users um, to hit, notify them, hey, I want you to uh, check this, and if you, if you say it's okay, to sort of go live? Or, well, the, or the way... They change that pending on the pending can only be changed by someone that has an account in the dashboard. So you you can't you know send it to someone that doesn't have a login for them to read it and approve it. You know they, they have to be a user in in the uh, WordPress account in the dashboard. Right. But once they are, yes, they can view it. They can review it. They will have a button that says publish. So, but I'm saying when you said something in. Um, Pending review, can you then one of your users that of the site can you then assign it to them to review it or something like that? Hmm. I'm not sure if you can assign it individuals to do it. You probably can. At the very least, um, at the very least, those that have a user account role of uh, editor and you know contributor and such, they have the ability to do that. But I don't know if you can assign individual pages and posts to individual people. Probably can. I have to look it up. Yeah. Um, adding on to this question, wouldn't that be um, possible to add another email to the main email? So couldn't you add several emails to receive the notification that you can make edits? Well, if, we, if we're under like settings in general, there's only a box for one email for the main administrator. But as we add new users, everyone has their own email. So it's not that we can add, you know, Victor, comma, John, comma, Janet. Only one administrator can have this access. But you can create multiple users as multiple admins or multiple uh, editors. Uh, and then they would get notifications when there's something pending. But the question about can I assign individual people, I'm not sure about that. <clears throat> now, let me, let me pause here. Um, since we're getting close to the end of the day, we still have questions and all of that. What I want to do, though, is switch gears a little bit and talk about archiving the site, backing it up. Because we've done a lot of work so far, and I, wanna, I don't want to lose this. And I don't want to start over next time on Tuesday. So I'm going to say hold off your question, the rest of the questions for the moment. Uh, let's change gears to making a backup of the site. I don't want to lose all of this that we've done. This is best explained. We're going to do it together, but I'm going to give you a handout that has all of the steps. So let me set this up to put this into the network folder. Handout number four. which is both the same on Windows and Mac. If you'd like to go back to the network folder now, I've got item number four, or uh, handout number four, archiving WordPress. Go ahead and copy that to your desktop or flash drive. You can't print yet, because it's noisy. But um, copy that over. We'll look at the instructions in general, and then we will follow them step by step, and we're going to make a copy of our site. So that when we come back on Tuesday, I don't want to start over. And if you try, and then if you want to continue to work on this stuff at home over the weekend, you will have a copy of what you've done so far. This is answering the question that I avoided the other time about you know working back and forth and how do I copy a site. What we're going to learn here is also a way for us to make. If I've already got victorsbakery.com on the real internet, I can follow the steps we're about to do here and make a copy of my site on the internet so I can copy it into WAMP and make all of the mistakes and changes in WAMP and it doesn't affect my real site. 
using this plugin that we're about to set up, we can make a copy of any site that we have access to and then migrate it and such. So let's copy that PDF over. Let's look at it in general and then we'll do it step by step. In general, this handout is divided into two sections archiving the site, resurrecting the site. We're going to do one of them today. The first part, we're going to make a backup of the site. If you would like to attempt then the resurrection part of it at home, you could. But together, we will do the, the retrieval of the site on Tuesday. But if you'd like a little practice, you can try that part. We're going to do this part. The big idea is that we need to download a plugin that will let us do this. There's no good built-in backup tool in WordPress, but there's lots and lots of there's lots of them out there in the world. I'm going to recommend one here in a moment. So we're going to download a plugin, we're going to install it, then we're going to turn on the plugin and walk through the steps of making a copy of the site. Once that makes a copy, it's going to give us two files. The whole site will be converted into two files. One is a um, a file called installer.php, which are the instructions to bring the site back to life, which we'll do next time. And then the other file that we'll get is something something something.zip. The whole site will be compressed into this zip file and instructions to bring it back in the installer. Yeah, you shouldn't, you know, double click this, nothing will happen. You shouldn't unzip this. You don't you don't want to do that. Together we will bring it back to life next time. But when we get done with this in a moment, this will make a full copy of the site. And then what I want to do is I want to copy those files to my flash drive to take home. You can email it to yourself, I guess, but as these sites get larger, the zip file is going to get larger. And oftentimes, email accounts don't let you send zip files that are very big. But we'll get to that in a moment. So number one, in WordPress, we're going to go to Plugins menu, Add New. And we're going to search for a plugin called Duplicator. There are many plugins out there to make a backup of a site. Here's one that I like. So plugins add new, search, duplicator. Type it, press enter, and you should see 51 results, but the one we want is this one. It should have this icon, it's like little atoms or something. And it comes from the company Snap Creek. And it's got over 1 million users, perfect five stars, 1,689 reviews, updated two weeks ago. This plugin over here might be great. This one might be great. I haven't used these other ones. I've used this one a lot for personal and for clients. This works very well. Uh, this has perfect five stars as well. So there's more than one option to do things in WordPress. But we want to use Duplicator, and uh, we'll just click Install. And uh, once it's installed, it has an option of GoPro. Is that the paid version? Mm -hmm. different? Yes, there's uh, often plugins that have a free version and then a paid version. The paid version often gives you a few extra features. Like this, if you get the paid version, it will make a copy of your site and save it also to your Dropbox, for example, or your Google Drive, or whatever. So it'll copy itself elsewhere. Also, you often get tech support. When you pay for the plugin, you, you can get one-on-one -on -one help from the, from the developers. This free version that we have here, we're on our own. We read the documentation on our own. If we have trouble, we're on our own. Oftentimes, it is worth it to pay for the pro version because of that tech support. But we don't need it yet. So. Once I've installed, you have to remember to click Activate. So under Plugins, I added a new plugin, and now it took me to Installed Plugin. And under Installed Plugin, I got a new plugin, Duplicator. Migrate and back up a copy of your WordPress site. And I've got a new menu item here, Duplicator. So once we add plugins, it adds new features, new menu items, new capabilities. And many times, there's a free version and a paid version. And you usually can get by pretty well with the free versions on most of these plugins that I'll talk about. All right, so my instructions. OK, we uh, added a new plugin. 
uh, whatever version, click install, you have a new item in the dashboard, duplicator, let's click it. And then from this new section, we're going to create a new backup. So click on duplicator. Usually at the bottom. Uh, there's no packages, there's no backups yet. Let's create a new package, a new backup. Now this doesn't have screen options, but it has help. So just FYI, the developers of this plugin, which are not affiliated with the developers of WordPress, Snap Creek is a different third-party company. Um, they have their own help system right there. But anyway, we're, we're here under Create New. In my notes, I, I explain this a little bit more in detail for the moment. We don't have to really worry about it. This is going to make a copy of our site, whatever yours is called, with the date. Uh, it seems to be tomorrow's date, but that's fine. Uh, it's going to make a copy of the site. Nothing really to change here. Just click Next. It's going to scan your site. It's going to uh, look through your, your site and see the site currently is 27 and a half megabytes big. When you buy space on these providers like GoDaddy and Bluehost and such, this is one of the things why that matters. My site right now is 27 megabytes. Uh, and something like Bluehost and GoDaddy probably gives you like 3 gigabytes, which is 1,000 megabytes. So my site is very small at the moment. But we will see that it gets bigger and bigger as we add pictures and products and text. We will see that this site gets bigger. And right now the database is 447 kilobytes. 1,000 kilobytes is 1 megabyte. 1,000 megabytes is 1 gigabyte. 1,000 gigabytes is 1 terabyte. So it goes in that magnitude. So the database, all of the important information is there. All your f files and plugins and pictures are up here. Hopefully, all of these say good. If one of them gives you a warning or an error, just wait there. I'll help you in a moment, but no, no problems should happen here. Our site's not that complex. Uh, the site scan is complete. We'll click Build. So what's going to happen is the plugin is going to go find every piece of your site, every text file, everything in the database, every picture, put it all together. And in my case, it took 2.6 seconds. Can you just hit Next first to go from step one to step two? Yeah. So let's see here. After we've done this, now I did mention Note 7. Don't worry about 7 at the moment. Leave the other defaults, click Next. In the Scan Complete, click Build. If your scan failed, OK, well, tech support. Uh, number 10, after the build is complete, you get two files, an installer and an archive. Click to download each of these. One is called installer.php. These are the instructions. And one is whatever.zip. You don't unzip it. You don't right-click it. You don't do anything with these until we talk about it in part two of the handout. For the moment, move this zip and PHP file into a folder with the date and keep them for next time. What I mean here is I want to click. You can do this one to do both at once, but you can click and it'll say, would you like to open it or save it? You want to save it. I want to click on this. It'll say, do you want to open it or save it? I want to save it. So it's going to copy these out of the site and onto the desktop or downloads folder. Let's see what happens on mine. I'll click install. I'll click save. I'll click the archive. I'll click save. And these ended up on my desktop. I get on my desktop the name of the site dot zip and I get install it. Don't double click these, don't right click them, don't do anything to them. But what I want to do is create a folder with today's date and move both of these into that folder to keep them together. I'm going to need both the installer and the zip file for next time when we're going to resurrect our site to start from this point where we stopped. I don't want to lose my menu. I don't want to lose my home page. It's all in here. 
So I'm going to be here in Windows and do right click New Folder. I'm going to call my folders by today's date, 2018 today's the 10th? Today's the 10th. You can call it May 10th. You can call these whatever you want, but I'm going to say don't call this folder with anything with spaces. This is going to cause problems next time. Well, if this downloaded to the downloads folder, your files are there. If it downloaded to the desktop, they're on the desktop. Yes, you need to get a copy of this onto your flash drive or everything will be erased. These computers, when they restart, everything gets erased. That's why our site from last time wasn't there. What I'm suggesting, what my handout says, is both the installer and the zip, I need to put them into my folder and take the folder with me. Just drag it. It doesn't matter if you copy it because once the computer restarts, it'll get erased. So that copy that you left will get erased. Just one at one at a time. I know it's confusing. One at a time. Yes. I'm not going to cover Pro at the moment. That question, uh, this uh, site that we're creating right now, um, it, it's you know sort of like a testing environment kind of site. It doesn't matter if you keep it or not because what I'm going to do is my copy of the site. I will make it available to you every time the class ends, in case you want to keep following along with my site. Now, if you didn't bring your flash drive, I, ha I can't do anything about it. It's going to get deleted. But next time. Uh, I, I'm going to put my site in the network folder. People can start off from my site so that they don't lose anything, so that they don't fall behind. And then there was a question over here. Yeah. You could do this at home, but you're going to start over. Yeah, so um, you can bring it from home to here, yeah. No, you still can. All of this duplicator stuff, this makes a copy of it, which is compatible on Mac and Windows, yeah. Sure. You can use this plugin on Bluehost and GoDaddy and all of those sites too. Even I already have the host, I still have to make it by myself. Well, this plugin's purpose is to make a backup of your site. Bluehost may have sold you a package that they will make backups for you. I, I don't know. But this one is a way for you to make backups yourself manually. At this point, no. Yes. Once you uh, copy your files in there, yeah, that's what you'll see, the zip file and the installer. Yeah, I'm only seeing Well, when you were on this screen right here, you clicked installer to download. Did you also click archive to download it? I don't trust that one. I don't trust that one. I would recommend to download each one individually. Just click on each one and download each one. One click doesn't always work because of pop-up blockers. No, you can black up every hour if you want. This this free one um, is basic and manual. If you buy the pro one, you can set a schedule, but the free one lets you make as many backups as you want. It's only like thirty two dollars. Yeah, something like that. So the whole point of this is, uh, this is making a backup of the site. We'll do lab time in a moment if yours doesn't quite work. But we made a copy of the site, these files, then I'm going to put them on my flash drive. This is a perfect copy of my site. Um, on my desktop here, 
I, I copied both of the files into the folder with today's date. And then I'm going to copy this folder to my flash drive. Question? Yeah. Just one more thing. Uh, I'm copying, I'm showing here. I made a backup of the site and I put it here into 2018. And I'm going to copy it to my flash drive. Now I'm also going to copy my site into the network folder. So if you'd like a copy of my site today or next time, you can grab it there. Every time at the end of the lecture, I'm going to put a copy of my site with the date. So every, every lecture at the end of the lecture from now on, there's going to be a copy of my site right there. So if you, yours didn't quite work, you can take a copy of my site and work on it at home. Or next time, if some of us didn't bring a flash drive, no problem. We can use my site starting next time. Of course, it'll say Victor's Bakery and all of that, but you can change it and such. And I'm going to put a copy of the site in the network folder every time. When we come back next time, we're going to do part two of the handout to bring it back to life. You could try to do it yourself over the weekend if, if you want. But we will do the second part to resurrect it based on this uh, duplicator backup to bring it back to life and to start at the, st at the part we just stopped at. Question? Um. You know, like you're talking about uh, having a couple of different WordPress sites in subdirectories. Mm -hmm. If you uh, do this backup, do you have to restore it to that exact directory? Or could you no. Another directory? You can restore back to another directory. Yeah. Uh, so it just what? Just saved me a whole hell of a lot of work. Yes. I'm I'm glad to do that. I. I this uh, I'll help. Like I said, I'll help people in just a moment. Uh, so, uh, the. Um, this plugin is great because yeah, it lets you make copies of a site. That that one site, then you can make a copy to work on it elsewhere. You can go from your real site, victorsbakery.com, make a duplicator backup down there, download it, and then put it into WAMP and play with it there. And once you know what you're doing there, maybe bring it back up to the server or have a version on your local server and make the real changes on the live site. So you have these possibilities now with this backup tool to. Um, do what you want. This is half of the migration process. It made up the backup, and then the uh, resurrection is the other half where you bring it back. So imagine, ex exactly, imagine that I'm, I'm working on the local host all of this month. I do this part to make the backup. Then I do this part on my, on my server, on my GoDaddy server, to migrate it to GoDaddy, and then I've migrated it from local host from WAMP to GoDaddy. We will do this later on on, on the last day of the class. Will we cover all creating a part of the page? No, um, that's uh, very dependent on the person and what they want to show to the world. So we can talk one-on-one -on -one during the breaks and such, but I'm not going to be doing a you know coming soon parked page sort of thing. OK, so let me end the main lecture at this point. Let's do a little lab time if you didn't quite get it to work. Um, then when we come back on Tuesday, we'll bring the site back to life and we'll continue.